Hey there, in this video I'm going to talk to you about the solutions to the very first homework assignment that I gave. Um, I gave about three of these and they're very similar to each other. The numbers have just changed out a little bit. So you're going to have a test next week and I'm not going to do three videos because all of the answers are very similar to each other. So all you have to do is watch this first video to figure out many, any of the questions that you might have on the second or the third um, homework assignment that you got. So let's just start with question number one. You're asked to find the vertex. Now this is in standard form, so the, the vertex is not apparent. So what we have to do is we have to work for it. And we need to know the values of A and B in particular. Um, and that is again obtained from standard form is A is 1, B is negative 3. You don't really need to know C for the vertex, but just I just get into the habit of listing all three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to construct a number um, that is obtained by taking the opposite of B and placing it over the double of 2A. The opposite of B and over the double of 2A, so it looks like this the opposite of b over 2 times a. Well, we should know that this is equal to a positive 3 over 2. And, folks, that just gives us half of the vertex. That gives us the x-coordinate. So put it in perspective. We see this table of values. It gives us the x-coordinate. So in order to obtain the y-coordinate, we have to go back to this original equation, and we have to find out what is the value of y when x is equal to 3 halves. That's what this whole thing means right here. What's the value of y when x is equal to 3 halves? So I'm going to remove all the x's and put in 3 halves. And again, if you want to do this on your calculator, that's fine. Just be real careful about parentheses. I'm going to do it out without the calculator because I think it's just good practice. This square means I have two copies of 3 halves. And when I multiply fractions, I don't have to have common denominators. I can just do it. So I'm going to get 9 fourths. And this over here, I'm just going to put a 1 underneath that 3. And I'm, again, going to multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. And I'm going to get 9 halves. Next, in order to combine, it must be the same kind. So we have to have the same denominator. It appears that it's going to be 4. So I'm going to change this second number to 18 over 4. If I want this to have a fraction of 4, I just multiply it by 4. And I get 8 over 4. Notice how 8 over 4 is the same as 2. And now all I have to do is combine the numerators. 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1 fourth. And so there's your vertex. All right. Let's take a look at the second question. Not so difficult. You can just look at it and tell what the vertex is. You just have to remember that x misbehaves. And so the vertex is going to be at um, 10, 22. All right, the third question. Got a lot of different questions about this particular graph. Is it opening up or down? Well, that's determined by the value of a which appears to be negative 1. Since it's negative, it's going down. The axis of symmetry, again, this is not in vertex form, so we got to work for it. It's negative b over 2a. So after listing a, b, and c, I can take the opposite of b and double the negative 1. And I'm going to get this fraction, which of course can be simplified to a positive 2. So x equals 2 is the axis of symmetry. That's your folding line that cuts the parabola into two equal parts. The vertex. I already know that x is equal to 2. And now I have to do is run the 2 through this equation. So there's the original equation. The only thing you have to watch out for is this negative. It's an understood negative 1. So I'm looking for the value of y when x is equal to 2. So I'm removing all of the x's and putting in 2. Order of operation says to do your exponents first, so I'm going to get a 4. And out of that, I'm going to negate it. 
And then I'm just going to combine those numbers and I'm going to get 6. The y-intercept when it's in standard form is always 0c. It always occurs at the c value. So it's 0, 2. And now I'm going to do the table of values. Since the vertex is 2, 6, I'm going to go to my neighbors. This one is two doors down. This one is my next door neighbor. Again, we talked about those increments in class. So just by substituting in a zero, I want to know the value of y when x is equal to zero. I'm going to get two. I want to know the value of y when x is equal to one. So again, I'm just going to evaluate this at one, and I'm going to get five. Now I'm going to plot the vertex. The axis of symmetry, notice the vertex and the axis of symmetry share the same piece of real estate. And there's one point, and then your freebie is your reflection point, your second point, and its reflection point is your freebie, and then you can sketch the graph. Okay, question number four, a lot easier to graph because you don't have to work so hard for that vertex. But first of all, we have to determine, is this graph opening up or down? And this time it's going up because the value of a is 3, and 3 is a positive number, so it's going up. The axis of symmetry is x equals 4, not negative 4. Remember, x misbehaves. The vertex is 4, negative 2. So I'm going to put that vertex right there in the middle. You notice that I went to my next door neighbor, one door down from the 4, which is 3. And I went to the 6, which is two doors down from the 4. This way I get a better population of points. When I plug in the value of 3, I'm looking for the value of y when x is equal to 3. And so through this evaluation, I get negative 1 quantity squared, which is positive 1, times 3, minus 2 is 1. And I'm going to do the same thing for 6. I'm going to remove the 6, excuse me, remove the x, replace it with 6, and evaluate. 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 3 times 4 minus 2 is 10. Plot your axis of symmetry, excuse me, plot your vertex and your axis of symmetry. And now you can do your, your reflection points, which I call your freebies. So on this side, you can plot the reflection point and that as well. And there's that sketch. Okay, numbers five and six. We have to determine whether or not these are maximum or minimums and then state the domain and range of the function. So that the, the, the question of whether or not it's a max or min is determined by if it's going up or down. Since this is negative, this graph is concave down which means it's going to have a maximum value, a high point. Okay, now where that high point occurs all depends on the vertex. So if you look, this, this is in vertex form, the vertex is right there. That maximum value, if we come over here and map it to the x, or excuse me, to the y-axis, the height of that graph, the maximum value is at 7. The domain, this is, this is an easy one, you just have to remember the domain for parabolas is always all real numbers. And the range, again, looking at this graph, we're looking at where do these y values map to the x-axis. Well, if you look, no y values will be mapped to the y-axis above this bar. So it's y is less than or equal to 7. All right, in this case over here, again, it's a max because of that negative. And this one, I do have to work a little bit harder for the maximum value. I need to solve for x first by constructing negative b over 2a. And then I'm not looking for the x value, and this is what makes it a little bit more challenging, is I'm looking for the y value, because the y value measures height. So again, 3 halves times 3 halves is 9 fourths times 3, think of it that way, is negative 27 over fourths. Place that 9 over 1, 
and you get 27 over 2. And it appears like the common denominator is going to be 4. So you got to double the 27. To get this number to equal a 4, have a denominator of 4, just multiply it by 4. And now just combine these three numbers and you're going to get 15 over 4. And that is the maximum value. The domain is always all real numbers. The range, again, just like this one over here, the range is not going to be any higher than the y value. So it's going to be y is less than or equal to 15 fourths. Okay, in number 7, you have to construct the equation and put it in vertex form. So let's begin with the end in mind. This is where what we want to the, the answer to look like. So we've got to replace these three pieces here. It's saying it's vertically stretched by a factor of 2. What you should know is that is the value of A. And that it's translated 6 units to the right. So we're going to leave that minus 6. And it's translated 9 units up. So it's going to be plus 9, and that's our answer. Okay, and number 8, we're just describing the transformations. We'll start with the negative. That negative, remember, rem, rem, uh, excuse me, that negative means it's a reflection. The 1 half means it's compression. The plus 5 means it's moved to the left 5. And the minus 4 means it's moved down Four. That's your answer. Okay, one more question. State the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the equation of the graph in vertex form. So here's the vertex. And it occurs at 2, negative 2. The axis of symmetry is always the x value, but you must put x equals because it's a line x equals 2. The equation, begin with the end in mind. Okay, there's the, the x value, so it's x minus 2, quantity squared minus 2. And that's your final answer. And this concludes this video. Remember, you can use this to help you study for the test, and uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. We'll see you in class.